back to a new episode of Big Word Little Thought. Ah, we're here, man. Bada boom. I'm Colton. I'm Keith. And we have a special somebody here in between us. What's your name, sir? Uh, yeah, I'm Ricardo. Nice to be with y'all today. Hell yeah, man. Thank We've you for being Ricardo here. We've got Ricardo in here. Oh, it's first guest of the second season. We were, what, fourth, fourth episode in? Fourth or fifth. I'm fourth losing fifth? track of numbers because our the episode numbers well, don't line up with the season number. You can only count to ten. So it's That's okay. true. I also failed every class I ever took in preschool. So <laughs> Math is hard. It, and it is rhymes hard. with meth. So, you know. It is hard. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so last week we didn't do a podcast because we... Oof. Yeah. <clears throat> oof. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> because we tried to set up a... Uh, what? Social discourse is what Colton said. The, the plan was, I put out an all call on Facebook, if any of you are my friends, where I tried to find um, two people that were friends of mine, uh, so they would have at least a mutual connection point. We're all opening our smart waters. Um, <laughs> I feel out of place without opening my mouth. Good podcast. <laughs> That's what we have to do. But I tried to get, um, specifically I wanted to get a, a white friend that didn't necessarily believe in systemic racism right. and a black friend that did believe in systemic racism okay. to have a discourse with each other. And we had it planned out where we'd have a steel man, which is where you come in in the beginning and frame your whole point of view, your argument, what you wanted to do. And me and you were just going to sit back here like little... Kind of like passively mediate. Like arbiter children. Right. Like we're right. just sitting here to keep anything from getting bad and learn. Exactly. And uh, and we were gonna keep them anonymous if they choose to be so, and uh, one of them was a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> he did back out. I don't want to call him that. He is a friend of mine, but he. Uh, I don't know you. I'm sorry. Uh, it's it's he he wouldn't mind. He'd probably find that funny. But he did back out for reasons of concern that someone would figure out who he was. Right. F- fear of backlash, social backlash. Of course, of course. And he had some. Um, anecdotal evidence of other people losing jobs and such for disagreeing, which I understand the fear. Um, kind of. But also, I still wanted to go through with this. So the next best thing is just get Ricardo on here to uh, oh, yeah. tell us how he feels and uh, you know give us give us your, your rundown. Loud so, and proud, man. This is your stage now, brother. I'm here to listen. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you guys for having me on. Absolutely. It was- it was really just interesting how that post was up there because I just kind of scrolled through it and all of a sudden someone's like, hey, I think this guy would be great. And that guy just happened to be me. And I was like, oh, all right, let's do this. Recommended. Like, You've been picked. <laughs> you're, you're the chosen one. <laughs> you won the lottery, man. So it, it's definitely fun. And plus getting to work with friends and getting to meet new ones is always it's always nice. So uh, Absolutely. That's a small intro out of the way. Um as far as just this particular topic, I, I found it quite interesting uh, because in my particular case, uh, not that I'm not African-American or anything of that nature. but Wait, what? I, <laughs> I was playing, man. But uh, just the group of people that I grew up around and the different teachers and so far, uh, a lot of the friends that I've had have all been really accepting of me as a person. They've never... Uh, at least to my knowledge, they've never just looked at my color and been like, uh, I don't like this guy. He's black. So right. uh, I've always been in a pretty good environment. So a lot of this stuff that some of these other families and people have been dealing with for a long time, I've only gotten an outside view, at least until I was about 17, which I'll get into a little bit later. So you were insulated, kind of? Uh, a little bit. A little, okay. It's one of those things that you know it's out there, <clears throat> but... Uh, once again, once I was about 17, mm. that's when I started actually seeing some of these things uh, happen to me personally, okay. which was like, OK, this is kind of what racism looks like up close okay. versus from seeing it afar. Now you were fortunate enough to be around reasonable people. Yeah. Growing up. People that are human beings. Uh, yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Pretty <laughs> much. That's a weird sentence. Just so you know, people that are human beings. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, it's fitting in this situation for sure. So. See, yeah. Seamlessly. <clears throat> also, uh, if you get into personal experiences, you don't have to if you don't want to. Cool? Cool. Cool, cool, cool. cool. Awesome. Awesome. Just so, making sure it comes from the, you know, you know, 
He had right from in his heart for all of those that can't see, which My is My enlarged everyone. heart. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to start off with just kind of looking at a basis of what institutionalized racism or what systemic racism is. So I was like, all right, I'm hearing this sentence thrown around, like systemic racism, uh, this is happening in you know corporate America, this, that, or whatnot. But what really is that term? So that way we could all kind of see what it is mm. and kind of start from that point and move from there. So granted, yes, it's Wikipedia. Guys, I understand Wikipedia is not the end-all be-all. The internet itself is not the end-all be-all of what everything defines itself to be. But this is the source that I used for this particular thing. And it says here that it is a form of racism expressed in the practice of social and political institutions. It can lead to such issues as discrimination in criminal justice, employment, housing, health care, political power, and education, among other issues. So it's definitely something that's deeply... Oh, it's vast. It's, it's, a pretty, it's pretty out there. It's kind of like the ocean. Or in this particular instance, I look at it more like... Uh, the ripple in the pond. Okay. Because it starts from one point, and it's not like that little drop does a whole lot of anything, because sure, like that drop came from, what, a rain cloud, or it fell off a leaf or whatever. Right. But once it gets down to it, it ripples off and can go into the oceans, rivers, wherever it's provided, and get bigger into lots of different waves. Okay. And kind of like what's happened now, which is quite an interesting turn of events uh, with everything going on in 2020 it's almost like we've had that drop that's just been spreading out through history right and kind of getting it from okay <clears throat> this is racism now this is like the backlash of either years of holding all these things in uh different ancestors that have taught us like hey this is what happens this is what you need to do in this particular situation all the way down to certain things that I don't feel like people, even myself growing up, didn't really understand. Uh, so one of the things I, um, that, if you know me, uh, my last name is Psungo. And mm. Definitely not your typical Southern name. I not struggled with it. Yeah, <laughs> I struggled with it. I tried to spell it like five times for him and he called me an idiot to my face. I enjoyed so. watching that yeah. happen, by the way. I was like a blithering idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so normal. So normal, yes. And that is perfectly okay. It's all right. We'll learn how to spell it another time. Right. <laughs> That's the second class. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but for me, my my dad is from Mozambique. Uh, my mom's from Tanzania. And for those of you that think Africa is a country, it is definitely not. Uh, Africa itself is a big continent. And on the two countries that my parents are from, they're on the... East or southeast side, if you're looking at my dad from Mozambique. So they came over here uh, due to a lot of different reasons. That's a whole other story that could take up another podcast. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> Absolutely. But one of the things I found very interesting, my dad, was, uh, my dad and I were talking uh, with mm -hmm. all this going on with uh, Floyd, uh, with uh, Taylor, all these different incidents going on. I said, Dad, what was your experience like, you know, coming to America? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, what, you're good. What year? What year did he? Uh, he came here '95. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So one year before I was born, um, he was uh, he was here. My mom, I think, was in college uh, in Ohio at the time. So, okay, very, very, uh, very interesting circumstances. But I asked him about just uh, as far as like racism goes like what was his well, what were his experiences and he said you well let me tell you uh back in mozambique um they would you know talk and converse and whenever you're like introduce somebody like if i were to introduce colton mm -hmm. I'd be like hey you remember colton guy plays the guitar has mm -hmm. that one podcast with that guy mm -hmm. oh yeah, yeah yeah i know him right totally fine um and then going to the uk just about the same thing uh, but then coming over to America, uh, the interesting thing that he told me is that he would have some friends like, hey, um, you remember, uh, you know, Ben, that, um, you know, white guy, tall guy well, with the mm. with the bob or whatnot. Right. And interesting thing about that was it said 
back uh, back in Mozambique and also back in the UK, but more specifically Mozambique, to say something like, hey, you know that black guy over there was as bad as saying the N-word. Hard R okay. capitalized. Mm. And in the UK, it was just about the same thing. You didn't introduce people by color. Right. So it was when he got here and it was like, hey, you know, you remember that black guy? It's like, whoa, like, what is this? And it took him some time to get used to, like, this is how the people of America operate. Right. Uh, so it's so, I felt like it was so vastly rooted into the United States. It's so vastly rooted into American history that even something as simple as descriptors uh, is just like, while well, we don't, like, I never looked at it as, that's being racist or anything yeah, of that I, nature. I never did either. But, you know, back over there, it's just like, that's pretty bad for you to say. And it was, it was kind of a thinking point because even growing up, um, talking with my mom, my dad, it's like, well, mom, you know, we talk about black, white all the time, but technically I'm not even black. I'm dark skinned. I'm like a dark brown. Hmm. And, you know, some of my friends, they're not even like truly white. They might be like a beige color or color. tan you yeah, know yeah. something like that you're khaki sir no, so sorry. it's like <laughs> <laughs> bombed i'm sorry that was funny though <laughs> but it's like you know i'm not this i'm not even the color that you know you're saying i am yeah. so it's it's one of the things that you know i thought about like how does that really stand because we talk about like black culture black history um uh, uh, black inventors, the black Ivy League, this, that, whatever. And it's like, are these descriptors putting further divides in between us? Because at the end of the day, if you want to get technical once again, none of us over here is black, just really dark brown people. Some people I've seen so dark that they start turning purple on their forehead, but definitely not <laughs> black. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Terrible. And then you have other people that are may maybe pasty beige olive whatnot but not white and even white itself is a color porcelain Ugh. So. <laughs> Ugh. colton on in midwinter yeah <laughs> bright like the northern star 100 watt light bulb <clears throat> <laughs> throwing him off his game sorry man <laughs> no no you are you're fine i love i love this it's great <laughs> yeah anytime we have like serious discussion which is rare uh there's, there's got to be a little comic relief, you know. Even though we're not funny people, we're just, we just try really hard. Funny looking. <laughs> there is something I wanted to add since we did already interrupt you. Uh, I was watching something yeah. that had uh, Muhammad Ali in an interview, mm. and he was talking about how he thought it was funny how that dichotomy existed between black and white and almost everything, and it mm. even goes back into like fantasy and mythology, like. At the root of it, the white things are like Snow White, white dresses for weddings, like all the good things are white and this black magic, black this, and everything that's black is bad. So it's almost inherent that when you use those descriptors for people, it's like right out of the gate, everything in your brain is like triggering. Connotation. Yeah, negative or positive connotation. Yeah. So I just, I wanted to add that, that I thought you were very much echoing that. That, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's very, very true. Um, I forgot who I saw. Um, speaking on it i uh, don't know if it was a big time celebrity but said some matter of fact it was uh somebody i was speaking to yesterday who she's big in her own right but um you're speaking to a celebrity yesterday man <laughs> not, a, not a celebrity but um. her her uh she's a photographer very very great person uh really energetic just really enjoyed just the conversation we had and she was talking about like the way she felt because of her hair uh, back when she was younger, it's like all the villains had like black hair mm. or things of that nature. And she's like, well, I have black hair and I don't think I'm a bad person. And it's like just to kind of see that descriptor and this this young lady, she, white, uh, white lady, Caucasian lady, however you want to describe her, but definitely not my shade. And it's just very interesting to kind of see that parallel coming off of somebody else talking about hair and how that old, uh, how that kind of translated over to just African-American people here in in the States. Just like you said, having these different connotations, whether it be in a 
cartoons, uh, political satire, um, just anything. It's just like a lot of these times, like black is is bad or black is supposed to make you do something yeah. or something of that nature where white in itself is like it's good, it's holy, it has this positive mm. connotation. Um, it's definitely very, very interesting to see. Um, but a color you will never see me wear white ever why my nipples poke through it not gonna have it nope <laughs> i wear gray and black and dark blue that's it black is my favorite color don't care black and purple there's your fun aside that no one wanted to hear but you got care. it anyway i just sometimes i'm just <laughs> dude i took 180 milligrams of caffeine and an alpha brain mm. about an hour ago so <laughs> spicy indeed <laughs> Uh, well, I guess let's push on into the next topic. Um, races in prison. Um, okay. That one was pretty interesting to kind of do a little bit of research on. So, um, the, okay, so there's a dominant race, obviously, by the pie chart there. Oh, yeah. And uh, Colton, or boss man over there with the very nice beard, if you want to uh, read. He doesn't know my name. No, I forgot him. I'm not going to lie. I enjoy not knowing. You Where do you want me to go, name? Ricardo? I'll pull it up. I'll find it. <laughs> Bet. If you wouldn't mind <laughs> reading off the majority and the minority races on that chart. Okay. Well, so far, what I see here is we do have um, a large chunk, 58.2% of inmates being white as of uh, the prior month's data, last updated in June of 2020. Then the second is black being at 38%. And then we have uh, Native Americans being at 2.3% and Asians being at 1.5%. Where is this federal prisons here, Ricardo? I mean, yeah, Federal Bureau, Bureau of Prisons up there. Okay. Big oh. bud. So just looking at that chart, you would be like, well, I mean, look, I mean, there's a bunch of white people in jail. Like, well, what are you talking about, the, all this divide between the police and whatnot? And it's very easy to do that. Right. And um, just taking it from a neutral standpoint, looking at that chart, it's just like, okay, I see that we do have a lot of Caucasians here in prison. I see that mm, quite a few African Americans in there. And then... Of course, we have some Native Americans, some Hispanic, yada, yada. Mm. Don't make up the majority. Not that they don't nowhere, matter. Nowhere near the majority. No. Of They're course, in the single digits. Excuse I know. Me. It's crazy. Me. I don't mean to rap you. No, no. You're good. Rubber. You're good. <clears throat> uh, but just looking at the chart, it's very easy to dismiss uh, a lot of what's going on. Because of that percentage in the majority of the Caucasian people in prison, how many of those people are serving full lifetime uh full life sentences how many of them are getting off with good behavior how many have been given fair if uh, fair trials how many of them have been rigged uh so that way they don't have to spend as much uh, time in there mm -hmm. uh and on the african-american side how many times was a deal proposed so that way they didn't have to spend as much time in there uh what uh, some of the charges uh that have been upped because of well, okay, we have him on misdemeanor marijuana, but let's say that he had a few baggies in there, so he's going to distribute. So we can bump that up a little bit and up keep it to him. a felony. Yeah, give him more time. Yep. Instead of a year, it's four or five years now, or ten sometimes. So it's like looking at that. Of course, the number you could say the numbers don't lie, but. At the same time, you have to look a little bit beyond those numbers and kind of see what exactly is going on in the judicial system. Because, yeah, I can read that chart and it's, be like, yeah, that's that's pretty nice. It's easy to take it at face value. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? At the glimpse, you're just like, oh, oh I would. Yeah, that's crazy. You're like, yeah, and I completely I completely follow what you're saying, man. So it's definitely like, yeah, very cool. But. As far as like where these different things are going and how these different situations are being treated, that I believe is the key. Uh, what needs to be looked at a little bit more. And obviously with the United States, there are several more, uh, several hundreds more 
Caucasian people than there are African American people in the United States. So, yes, while that number is smaller, you're also dealing with a smaller community of people. So you do have a lot of these kids, whether they are, are in good neighborhoods, not so great neighborhoods, rough ones, right. doesn't necessarily matter. A lot of these different places, um, you're met with, uh, you're met with people that either let are letting power go into their head and feel like they can do whatever they want. You may have people that are racist and take advantage. Maybe towards the end of the month, you have people that are trying to meet this, uh, meet the status. So I have to get this many arrests, and it's oh, easier yeah. to do it Quotas. with. Yeah. So it's easier to do with them than it is to go after you know the blue collar, uh, blue collar Caucasian male, whatever. Uh, mm. So definitely. It was one of those things that uh, I wanted to look at just uh, for my personal knowledge and also wanted to look at to gain a better understanding because uh, definitely not every uh, – I'm not saying that every African-American in, that is in prison that is has been given, let's say, a life, a life sentence should not have that. Mm. Uh, I'm not saying that every – uh, Caucasian person in prison needs to have that amount extent, but it's a matter of where the law is being bent and broken to be uh, the, to the nuance of each decision. Right? Mm, exactly, exactly. And that's something that I, me and Keith have talked about before. I'm not sure if we've done it on the podcast, but data um, is powerful. <clears throat> it shows you obviously hard numbers, something to grasp. But at the end of the day, statistics only tell you the ends. They don't tell you the means yep. to get to that point. So that's where throughout this whole argument on either side that I've heard, either the, the no systemic racism versus actual st systemic racism, if I can talk, is they use the same statistics. However, the bias they apply is the, the means, I say bias, but the means they apply is different. Like yeah. the People that say there is no systemic, systemic racism. All right, repeat it one more time just so you got systemic it. Systemic racism. Okay, good. The ones that say there is no systemic racism will say that, yes, the number of uh, incarcerated African Americans is higher in certain states, certain situations, because they simply do more crime. Whereas the pro, like there is systemic racism mm -hmm. argument is there are more African Americans incarcerated for longer because the system is being leveraged against them, yeah. where it's yep. being not leveraged against Caucasians. So I just wanted to throw that in there because I like to talk. I don't know. You're good. <laughs> you are. You're good. It's definitely nice to have a different voice in there and not have to feel like you have to fill up empty space. Yeah, I don't want you to feel like you're being yeah, grilled yeah, on yeah. a committee either. You just, no. just talk. But man. I also it's don't want to interrupt you. So. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I don't say, understand free. what's why can't we interrupt? That's what makes good ra pod radio podcasting. We can interrupt. I yeah, just don't want to. I'm not going to like always blatantly feel like, and rudely. I, I always feel them. like there's going to be like a real point, like a big, solid, golden point that and he's I been just working to. And over then, it. yeah, one of us <laughs> just going to be like, but well, that's why we're fat. Because, <laughs> and then suddenly yeah. it loses all traction. So <laughs> we're, we're hacks, man. We are hacks. <laughs> oh. Far from Joe Rogan. Mm hmm. Sweet. Um, nice banter. <laughs> <laughs> Dead air. Se segwaying out of things is definitely difficult. It is, is it, it's hard to Is do there it. anything but else you need me to pull up or discuss? on What's your, so, what you about to say, Keith? I enjoyed what you were saying about this is just population. You know, that's all that is. Like, there are <clears throat> plenty of times where you go to prisons, because I don't know if you guys ever been to a prison to visit. A relative or anything like that. I have. I've, I've worked in one. You've worked in one. But I've okay. never I, been to visit. I always, yeah. I always, I always forget that. I always forget that you're a CEO and you're off. Time. No <laughs> air conditioning. Air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um. But any person there, any prisoner there, they're innocent. <laughs> you know, that's just like the stereotype. I'm not trying to jump into the stereotype, but that's a thing. It's always been a thing. Nobody is guilty. Nobody. But. The people that actually aren't guilty are at the bottom of that uh, that fallacy. You know what I mean? They're at the bottom. They're the last person to be heard. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like someone who is wrongly um, convicted, prosecuted, or convicted. Yes, 
they won't they're never going to be heard until all these other people at the top of the barrel that are just trying to you know clean their slate <laughs> they think they're wrongly or whatever they were, they'll be the last person to be heard and that is the worst thing to me you know what i mean i don't know if you guys ever seen oz you ever watch that show no, I don't think I have. It was on HBO. No, it's I don't like have in the nineties. It's a prison show, and it's uh, it's really intense. But there's a paraplegic prisoner there that was, uh, I think he murdered a police officer. But it was in self defense. But since he was African American, he murdered him. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, <clears throat> I'm pretty much just regurgitating what he was saying that. All of these people, everybody, and it does the whole wide pan of all the prisoners, you know, mm. everybody, every one of them tell you they didn't do it, you know? And the one guy who didn't do it never gets heard. Yeah, what does it matter? The what one- does it matter, man? You'll have yeah. to dig through so much just to get just to get a little a little attention. And then you got the full weight of the, the system going against you the just because. Full weight. And I'm talking about both of our weights combined. <laughs> We're going to... Whoa! Was that me or you? I don't know. It might have been me at an angle. <laughs> this is somebody that went on blue mic Vader over it, in man. <laughs> but Oh. Uh, Ricardo, I don't mean now? to steal your... I, I pulled up some statistics here. I didn't know if Ricardo wanted to use any of them. This yeah. is uh, some basic statistics on uh, poverty rates and just the population that encompasses the, the most poverty level. Um, actually, over here... Um, the overall poverty rate is at 11.8%. So that's of the entire population. That's 38.1 million people in the United States are technically under poverty level. Um, there is another statistic here, tw- twice the poverty level, percentage of people who fell below twice the poverty line. So $50,930 for a family of four annually in 2018. So that was 28.9% of people that's 93.6 million people in the u.s um but also down here you see it break down by by race um hispanic poverty rate is at 17.6 percent uh native american poverty rate is at 23.7 percent um white poverty rate is only at 8.1 percent that's 15.7 million that's 15.7 million people uh, African American poverty rate is at twenty point eight percent. So this is based off of the one hundred percent marker for each right. race. Right. So only twenty point eight percent of African Americans are in poverty. Well, that's only eight point nine million people, I should say. But that's twenty percent of all African Americans yeah, in the, the United population States. Of Whereas white poverty might be at fifteen point seven million people. Right, but that's not even ten percent of its population of the, the whole population of right. white people. So, I just wanted to pull those up to kind of let everybody know about the starkness of comparing the statistics of even just poverty, not just imprisonment, but just being. Because we all know that whenever you can't reach your means, you're going to be more likely to do things that aren't necessarily mm-hmm. legal to make ends meet. Just. I mean, dire straits. You know, yep. you're going to do what you got to do. Um, and historically, the more impoverished people always have the most criminal activity because right. that's just obviously how it would go down. Um, but yeah, I, just, I wanted to pull these up as a reference just in case you wanted to use these, Ricardo. Uh, I know this you weren't talking about poverty percentages yet, um, but I pulled it up anyways. No, you're good. <laughs> I mean, that is like... Shocking numbers, man. They're pretty hefty. That's crazy. And this is 2018. This is before uh, yeah, pandemic. 2018. Kinda. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So this is, uh, I mean, this is before uh, before people are getting furloughed, laid yep. off, all this different stuff. So definitely, um, these numbers are going to be raised up. Quite we'll a have bit. to wait until next year or the year after to figure out true stats on this year. I imagine. Oh yeah, and of course, right now, uh, as if you do watch the news, uh, you'll see different numbers kind of going back and forth. Um, I always say take the news with uh, at least a grain of salt, if not a pillar, depending on what the topic <laughs> is going to be be on. Um, like and not, and it's mainly because I'm not a political person. I, I've never been one that's leftist, rightist, Democrat, Republican, anything like that. It's just for me personally, it's never been amusing because a lot of these different people 
do a lot of different things regardless of which side you're on. Hmm. Um, but as far as um, one of the new statistics that I did see, um, it did say that the African-American rate for poverty did go up by a small percentage. So maybe like it went from 0.5 to like 0.8, hmm. which, of course, you look at that and it's like, oh, well, 0.5 to 0.8, not too bad. But as Colton just read with the numbers, those are can be hundreds of people that are yeah, out thousands, of work. millions, definitely. We want to go further. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. But definitely, you have a whole lot of people that are just not doing well. And while the overarching theme is definitely we want to get that percentage low as a whole, mm. um, we definitely want to almost look at some of these different places that are hurting, I guess, um, for different reasons. Uh, like you said, the places where um, uh, the places where you're just not able to make ends meet, maybe you've placed 20 different applications, haven't got one call back, you've gone in with your suit and tie ready for an interview. Um, I know it's common for at least people with dreadlocks, because I used to have dreadlocks, uh, cut those off and see if you can get a job and still get a no. Um, after a certain point, it's just like, I've got to put food on the table, um, may have a kid at home, may, you know, have a wife, girlfriend, whatever, uh, to take care of, maybe mom or dad, whatnot. Right. And you've got to make ends meet. Yeah, everybody's situation is different. Of course. Right. Um, <clears throat> a lot of these, uh, a lot of these different things just, um, they bring a certain kind of merit to the table just to kind of see, like, how that translates into different crimes. And then again, also how that translates into how people are viewed. Um, I was actually watching something not too long ago talking about um, uh, one person going into a convenience store. Huh. Uh, since convenience stores happen to be convenient to rob. Um, <laughs> well put. <laughs> but, you know, you go in there and maybe you got a guy like me, 6'2", uh, comes in with dreadlocks. Pant, voice, you know, pants sagging. Uh, I come in and I'm looking around as if I'm, you know, looking around pretty quick, looking like I'm maybe trying to get something from the store. Uh, naturally, me, myself, I would be looking at that person like this is, you know, this is kind of a weird situation. But put that same guy in the same kind of clothing and he's just kind of hanging out or maybe talking to a buddy or something. And then to go and then either harass that person or to be like, hey, you know, you need to buy something or get out. Hmm. That's one of those things where it's like you're playing with a couple of different uh, couple of different strings, I guess. Because on one hand, maybe you had this particular character come into your store before and do the same thing and you've got burned. Uh, maybe you do have some sort of... Uh, Maybe you do have some sort of hatred or racist, uh, racist intent toward that person. It's pretty much, it is is what you think in your heart. I can't read your mind, read your heart like that. But um, it's one of those things that's very, it's very interesting to kind of look at and see where that person goes. Because he was talking about clothing and um, talking about maybe if that guy came in, pants up, straight posture, whatever, maybe he wouldn't get looked at that way. And it's... It's kind of sad to see that clothing would make a difference, but it's also one of those things that you can kind of understand in that particular circumstance, especially if um, you happen to have been somebody that's gotten uh, gotten burned. Um, and that kind of leads me into this George Floyd incident, which I know it's definitely very sensitive, especially since the uh, funeral just happened, I believe, last Tuesday, the mm. final uh, funeral and one thing that i've been hearing about um is that the owner of the particular uh convenience store that floyd was at uh one of his policies was to call the cops if he found a counterfeit bill um and then later on he goes on to say if i had known this was going to happen i wouldn't have called them in the first place and he had mm. immediately changed his policy and it goes to show, like, you don't know why that particular policy was there. Because what if he had been getting 
several hundred dollars of counterfeit bills coming through that store. So he decided, hey, if we just call the cops and have them handle it, then, yeah, we can talk to insurance and get stuff situated there. But then we can find out where these things are coming from and they can do their jobs. Mm -hmm. And then if he is a criminal, fine. If not, whatever. You it know, was a mistake. That is yeah. what it is. But then in this one instance, you have this one cop and this one guy and their destinies are kind of intermingled together forever because of this one incident. Um, it's been said time and time again that he had about nine minutes to think about what he was doing. The officers there had nine minutes to intervene and chose not to. Mm. And to kind of play devil devil's advocate for that officer, let's say he wasn't racist. Let's say that he was having a bad day. Uh, he thought, well, I'm the officer here. I'm going to do what I've got to do. He called me because he had a counterfeit bill, so whatever. I'm going to do what it is. The point is, is that that particular thing is not relevant. And the reason for that is, is because you have this officer who is Caucasian and you have this guy that's African American. So no matter what he was thinking at that moment, he brought two issues to the table, police brutality and racism. Mm -hmm. Very true. And that sparked up just a huge load of things. Um, of course, protests, riots, looting, all these different things uh, that have popped up because of this one incident. Uh, and, of course, I know that we have the uh, Taylor incident. Uh, we had the Aubrey incident. And, of course, several more along the way that there are plenty of Facebook posts, pictures, things oh, of yeah. that. It's well uh, known. Well known. Definitely well known. But just this kind of catalyst point for everybody to start speaking on it and talking about it, while tragic, <laughs> definitely needs to be brought up because with it, uh, police brutality does affect everybody. It's not just an African-American problem. It is, I would say, personally, I believe it's prominently an African-American issue, but it does help out everybody in the long run if... Oh, absolutely. Uh, They're reformed. I 100% agree yeah, with no, that. No, I cannot... I have a tattoo on my head, man. Okay? <laughs> right here. And it's very off-putting. You know how many stares I've gotten from security guards? Like, especially during the pandemic time where you know masks I, i'm gonna wear a mask into a grocery store a grocery store excuse me <clears throat> i've gotten a few looks like um i'm not trying to disparage grubs but the first time i went in there with my bandana because i didn't have a mask on You're in the wrong neighborhood freshly shaved head because mm. <laughs> i like showing off this tattoo and i'm balding so whatever um approaching middle age problems <laughs> <laughs> i'm 25 uh walked in there and man I mean, there were the like two of the owners were wearing bandanas, and they would not, their eyes would not leave me. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I'm not running fast. They both could catch me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, it's definitely a weird feeling. And that kind of, I, I don't mean to interrupt. And we're at a great pace here. But do you? I mean, have you ever been like profiled? I I have actually. Um, once again, it's something that happened uh, in the later years. Um, one instance, I happened to be working at Domino's. Okay. On on the phone, talking to a customer. We were already closed for the night. Okay. And typically, we don't pick up the phones because it is what it is at that point. We have other things that we have to do. Of course. But. You missed your opportunity. But I decided to pick up and just be like, hey, look, sorry, we're close. Nothing we can do at this point in time. Uh, please call back tomorrow. Uh. So talking to this guy. Guy happens to be African American and. The way that I talk, I would say, is very educated. A lot of people say that I, or a lot of people have said in the past that I talk white. Mm. So over this uh, conversation, um, he's like, man, you know, why don't you just let me get this pizza? Like, that's all, that's all I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to do like, me a favor. Sir, please. our ovens are off. <laughs> like, sir, I'm sorry. We closed literally five minutes ago. I cannot send anything else out. Um, there's nothing we can... Man, can you just can you just leave it in like the the parking lot or something? Like I'll come and get that, bro. It ain't it ain't no it ain't no problem. 
sir, I can't go out to the parking lot. It's a safety. Man, it ain't even a safety issue. See, <laughs> it's just because you crackers over here, you're not going to let me do such and such and such and such. Oh and I said, gosh. first of all, <laughs> the way, man. first of all, I'm African-American. I'm black. Man, see, then you just a sellout. You just you just want to be, <laughs> you just working for the white man. That's he, all it he is. Did Uncle Tom you over pizza? He, uh, was, Uncle he Tom me over he, pizza. <laughs> A black man profile a black man. <laughs> what kind of? That's incredible, man. That it's, is so sad, though. That's I. I mean, is that irony? It, a little bit, because you would think, like, <laughs> look, my guy. We, <laughs> hey, bud. You know, I I speak I speak your language. I like cornbread. Oh <laughs> my, oh my, fuck. <laughs> so do we. Yeah, so corn fed over here. <laughs> oh my god. Like we speak the same language. Like, come on, but. It was just one of those things like I'm a sellout because I speak educated or I'm a sellout because I'm African. like, what exactly? Because you work for a multi-million dollar company? Like, <laughs> like, what is it? There are two things that I wanted to add. Uh, one specifically to this point and one to the point you were making before this. To this point, I hate that whenever someone talks uh, fluently, effectively, educated, then it's talking white. Dude. Why is that? Okay. My, okay. Jessica, our computer. Uh, computer guru. Computer guru, even though she's not. Uh, I love you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> her dad, born in Chicago, right? I try to use big words when I'm around them just so, you know, they, they see me as appropriate for their daughter. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Try to sound at least like I know what I'm talking about. And anytime I say three, uh, three, you know, multisyllabic words in the same wow. sentence. Wow. Multisyllabic. That got me. Syllabic. Mm. Syllabic. Um, <laughs> and now we're speaking Arabic. I know. No, we're not. Uh, he always, like, looks at me and he's like, well, I didn't go to college, Keith, so I don't really know what you're saying. And <laughs> <laughs> exactly how he sounds too I promise you and um i'm always like man i said assimilate <laughs> i was like how do you not know what that means you know what i mean and it's just i i can understand you know what i mean i can i, I can get where like why do you sound so proper why do you sound so like uh uh uh, uh what's the one? Oh god what's the one i don't know i thought i had it and why it do went you sound away so, uh, why do you sound so preppy why do you sound Preppy. so yacht club? Um, so yacht prim. Club. prim. Prim. There you go. Pompous. Mm. Yeah. Just call me an asshole, too. <laughs> <laughs> like, give him an apple, and we'll show him that he's an asshole yeah, still. Exactly. Like, exactly. But, yeah, it's definitely, just on that point, it's it's very weird that, like, vocabulary or, like, for me to be loquacious, for me to have an oh education. Oh, my goodness. We're using What's that mean? words no, I'm today. Just, I'm just playing. <laughs> That, you know, for me to have that kind of knowledge is like, I mean, so did you go to like white school or something? I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I I just went to school. I like using big words. I, I like for people to be able to understand me on a different level. Mm. That's why I speak the way that I speak. Or just not understand you. You know, what I mean? <laughs> you say some stuff that goes over people's head and you're like, we're not friends. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> So definitely very interesting situation. Um, I've That's had hilarious. A, I love how you twisted that, man. That's great, dude. That's the, I, I enjoyed that thoroughly. I'm sorry. Like a reverse profiling. It, mm, well, it's not reverse I, profiling. I think it's just profiling, Colton. Ironic profiling. <laughs> it's it's definitely on the phone. <laughs> on the profiling. Phone. <laughs> like can't even see the guy, and it's just yeah. It was definitely a weird situation. One of those that I laughed at because it was just like. I don't even go home to you, so I don't care. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I noticed when you started telling, you were chuckling, and I was like, "Yeah, it's gonna be good." It's gonna Just be imagine good. you staring like at the wall as it's happening. Like this guy is he's he's going here. He's going to try to go here. <laughs> it did, that, <laughs> I was like, I've had um, I've had one other instance. Well, <clears throat> one uh, one other solo instance where um happened to be a police officer. Don't remember okay. his name. Even if I did, I wouldn't say anything about yeah. him because. At the end of the day, probably was just having a rough night. All right. But driving my dad's Cadillac at the time because okay. hadn't hadn't got my car out yet, hadn't picked it out, hadn't made enough money for it. Okay. So I'm driving, and it happens to be uh, my ex fiance's uh, birthday, who was my 
girlfriend at the time. So driving from work, going to pick her up. Uh, all of a sudden, see the woo woo. So <laughs> that got me too. <laughs> That's a good siren. That got. Yeah. So I pull over and I'm like, shoot, was I speeding? No, I wasn't speeding. Okay, well, okay, what's going on? I vape, so it's like maybe maybe you saw the vape. I don't know what's going on here exactly. Just kind of a weird situation. Right. So I pull over because I'm like not inherently doing anything wrong. And he comes over and he's like, hey, do you know why I pulled you over today? I said, no, sir. No idea. Hmm. And I said, well, I'm going to need to see your uh, license registration. Well, I was like, okay. Go give him my license registration. Sitting there waiting on Snapchat, doing whatever. Right. Um comes back and he said, hey, you know, I uh, saw a lot of smoke coming out of your car and for whatever reason got really bold and was like, oh, it's just vape juice. You, Do you want to try it or, <laughs> like, are you good? And he's like, no, no, that's fine. Mm. Part of that was kind of purposeful just for the simple fact that it was vape juice, right. wasn't marijuana, had Expose. nothing. And you're blatantly, you know what I mean? Like, no. Like, it is what it is. I'm not I'm not driving on the road under the influence or anything of that nature. So he's like, well, uh, you know, just kind of ran the number and saw that it wasn't your car. I'm like, <laughs> I understand. But it's nah. my dad's car. Right. That's why the name is different. You can see on my driver's license, my the same middle name that I have is my dad's first name. You'll see it on the registration. Hmm. Looks at it and's like, ah, oh, yeah, um, oh, let me just give these back to you. Uh, saw that you were kind of swerving on the white line, so I pulled you over today. Definitely. Uh, I mean, now, um, okay, I'm listening. I'm sorry. Now, make sure um, you go in a <laughs> accent. Uh, check your tail light. Saw that it was out. Go ahead and get that change. I think I know this guy you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, all right, cool kind of weird stop Mm. i go and pick her up you know she's excited we're going to one of her favorite restaurants and i said hey babe uh let me pull over here real quick i need you to check something for me Mm. um she said okay cool why i said trust me i need you to check this for me. just humor me humor me Mm. so we park out at liberty gardens not too far away um open the uh, opened the car and I said, uh, "Go check my ba- uh, go check my back lights for me, please." Mm. So I hold the brake. She looks at him. I said, "All right, come back." She's like, "Okay, why do you want me to do that?" I said, uh, "How do my back lights look?" She said, "They're both on. Like, why did you want me to do that?" Mm. I was like, she "Called him." <laughs> I said, "I just got pulled over. That's why I was late. Had this long conversation that was a little bit weird." Yeah. And he said that my back, uh, my back, back lights were out and I needed to get that changed. And she's like, oh, well, the cop you were dealing with was the, you know, white guy. And I was like, yeah. She said, yeah, that's why. And I said, oh, mm. I got it now. Damn. I understand. Definitely weird situation. I haven't had a lot of those. But you were almost naive almost to that, right? Just like a little bit. You didn't bit. want it to be that. You know what I'm saying? It's It was definitely one of those that it was almost like I was in a little bit of my own kind of denial there. Right, 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 right. Where it's like, okay, I hear about it happening, but this is definitely not happening to me. Right. And then Something's it did. actually wrong. It has to be, right? Yeah. So. Like, that's the, that's the same horse shit when your um, license plate lights, you know what I'm talking about? The lights that illuminate uh-huh. it? If those are out, they'll oh, pull you yeah. over. Mm-hmm. It's not that their headlights aren't shining on it and it's reflective. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of nonsense. And also the swerving thing, they literally, it is pro- probable cause. Or yeah, I think whatever so. Whatever it is, cause. if your tire hits the white line. Could be can, under the influence. Can, yeah. I've had them do that to me before, under the influence. Multiple times. I got a $300 ticket because of that. Oof. Rip. $300. Also, the, the license plate light was out, too. But you, you have had experience from both races. <laughs> both races of profiling you on. That's two assholes. That That's is... hilarious, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Come together by one thing. Mm. <laughs> Uncle Ruckus and Uncle 
Jim Uncle Crow. Uncle Ruckus. <laughs> Uncle Ruckus is hilarious, dude. That's one of the greatest characters ever depicted in a show. You know what I mean? Definitely. That and Stink so. Meter, man. Stink. <laughs> God. Love it. Such Save a great show. me a plate. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. But I just remember my second I'll see point. You later. I just oh. remember my second I just <laughs> stamped all over Keith. Um, That's good, dude. I don't ever have anything important to say, the, man. The point you were making before about how um, Derek Chauvin and George Floyd, how their destinies kind of intertwined and met at that point, whether or not, whether or not Derek Chauvin was actually racist and had racial like intentions or whether or not George Floyd was actually being difficult to apprehend, whatever actually happened, uh. post-fact, none of that ultimately mattered. Because uh -uh. post-fact, they both ended up representing a cause that others, whether or not how true it is, which I believe personally that that is true, yes. but whether or not that that's true, it's going to be used for that. And the the question I'm asking is, do you think that people look for almost a martyrdom situation? Like, that they need that for their own, I don't want to say narrative, because obviously a lot of people are out here for the right reason and believe it's wrong, but do you think there are bad actors? I do. Um, one very, very big one that happened a couple of years ago was Jesse Smollett, where oh he, my gosh, where he went mercy. and had that whole situation happen where he got all attacked. About that. Oh and yeah, with the what was it? He was getting subway in Chicago. I think so. Yeah, at three a.m. and he paid he paid two guys to. Do you know what temperature it was outside? Probably way below freezing. Way below <laughs> freezing. Yeah, and he, they what they found him with a a, a noose around his neck. Something like that. Something it was some, it was something crazy. It was a you know while I mean? ago. I can't even remember what all happened. But. I remember. Yeah, I remember when that came out. Everybody that. Oh God. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. No. No. You're fine. Because <sighs> for me, that's an example of somebody that like. As much as I, I like the show Empire from season one and two, I think we're out at the time. Maybe three was in the work. Something like that. But I like I liked his music. I looked up. Uh, not necessarily looked up to him, but I enjoyed his character in the show. Hmm. And then you get this, and it's just like, why'd you even have to do that? Like, there's several different ways that you could have stood out. Why'd you yeah, use a okay, platform so that way? Exactly what he, what you just said. It was just a way of getting more attention, is what you're saying, right? Yes. And then on, uh, on I guess, on the other side of that, um, not uh, once again, not to be disrespectful to Floyd and his family, because that's not the intention, but. Just because it's such a prominent thing right now and things that uh, fresh on everybody's mind. Um, there's some people that may have even government officials even that may um, have been totally against racism in any shape, way or form. Huh. Um, many people that are definitely against that had a nice protest in uh, Milan just yesterday yeah. for that. Um but some people that made def, like George Floyd was there and it's just like, yeah, this is the guy. He, you know, he's our Jesus in right, this particular yes, yes. instance. And not uh, not that I want his death to have no meaning or not that I don't want people to look at this and be like, this is an example of what's wrong. You do have some people that are this was their call to action. Yeah. And it shouldn't have ha it shouldn't have been their call to action. It should have been something that was already worked towards. And you might be thinking, well, why is that? Why? I mean, why can't I? You know, look at that. I'm not saying don't find uh, don't find uh, the light in this particular situation. Uh -huh. But these are things that, as many people have posted and said, Twitter, Facebook, whatnot, things that have been going on for hundreds of years. Why did this one situation have to be? where you started so you yeah can i guess media <laughs> that is I an mean, interesting i'm just saying like it's not this is gonna sound weird but i just don't have better words for it but media it just forced it you know what i mean every platform every news channel every network bam it was it was like it was a milestone for them you know what i mean to build this up like and it's well think about <sighs> it's rough. think about the extringent circumstances too though like this is 
I don't want to say perfect storm, but mm-hmm. this is more or less the perfect storm. Oh, because, yeah, no, yes. Because you got everybody on lockdown, yep. mm-hmm. been on lockdown. Major uh-huh. cities still not even entering phase three of trying to go to normal. Oh, some of them still Memphis just Memphis just went back to phase two, by the way. Yep. I have a feeling most people will. That's beside the point. Um, you got people in a box yep. almost mm-hmm. everywhere, mm-hmm. glued to their phones, glued to doing whatever. Still, the unemployment number is outrageously high because of this. There's a lot of people with nothing to do. And then you have a seemingly perfectly documented instance of police brutality of a white officer and a black civilian. It couldn't, like, it couldn't have been written. It's like serendipity. To be yes. a, more, you know I mean? a more perfect situation for the cause of like bringing everybody together. Like, what the hell is happening? Because it instantly went on social media. You know, it was recorded by bystanders. Instantly. It, and, of course, we all know that virality is, once it's achieved, it's, it's gone. And yeah. it instantly out of hands of the police department. That's new fame. Mm-hmm. They couldn't do anything to, to cover that up. Like, the, the first protest started happening... Almost immediately the day after, of, yeah, like, yeah. it happened. Maybe the day after. I don't know. I can't. I remember. think it was even the day of. Well, people they were started yeah, gathering. There were people gathering. Yes, of course. but the first official protest was definitely the day after. Right. I was watching oh, it on yeah. my phone, and you're, you're seeing these people, <clears throat> which they're being peaceful. They're being peaceful, but they don't even want the police there. The police are trying to do an investigation. Still, some a man died. Not saying that all police are. They're not all bad. They're not all good. But they're still people, and they're trying to do the right thing. They're yeah. trying to go through and figure it out. They can't get there to do it. Yeah, not properly. They're being run out, which, in the you know the court of civil opinion, yeah, there you go. everything's been decided. Like you can see it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like I, I see that. You see that. I don't need to see anymore. I saw what I saw for eight minutes, nine minutes, almost. Nine minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like what more is there to see? So for is there really though? You know what I mean? Like, th- coming from the, I'm pretty hot-headed, uh, there's not, re- I mean, I wanted, I don't wish death or anything bad on anybody, mm. but the man, Derek. Derek Chauvin. Chauvin should have been fucking Harry carried seppuku <laughs> right there, man. Like, just well, decapitated. What, and this is this is the brutal irony of it all. Okay, I'm listening. Is, the police force is, of course, going to do everything they can to make sure he has his habeas corpus. He's going yes. to have his due process. Absolutely. And that is the that is the spear in the side mm-hmm. of society is that George didn't. Yeah, they denied him that. He didn't get that. He didn't get a trial by his peers. He didn't get any of that. He just got death. Yeah, violently denied his due process, pretty much. But now, they're, of course they will, and I'm not saying they shouldn't. They're going to go through great lengths to make sure Derek Chauvin gets his. And, of course, with everything we know of qualified immunity and all of the other bundles of tape they have to cut Man, through from police look, unions Jesus. to get anything done... Like, he is way going to have his habeas corpus. And like what you sent me, even if he gets convicted, he'll have pen- that he's pension's going like to go to his family. Pension, that $50,000 pens- $50, in pension right now. I know. That pension is going to still come. Oh, for sure. From so, taxpayers, And too, I think that which, is... Sorry. It just inflames <laughs> everything. It just inflames everything even more. Because then mm. you got... I don't want to say people that don't understand, but you got people that knee jerk. It's it's hard to it's hard to comprehend that. Absolutely. Because if me or if anyone in this room killed somebody by kneeling on them, trying to perform an arrest for a ten minutes, arrest, no. we'd be done. Yep, we'd be done. Well, we'd be hated by everybody else. I mean, and you know that I mean? was that's what's happening here too, obviously. Mm-hmm. And it's just it's there's so many nuances to both sides. Of the argument of systemic racism, and this is trying to go back here uh, in the grand schema, is that those nuances get overlooked. Oh, of course. Because not everyone that says all lives matter are are trying to say it in a negative way, but they don't see the nuance of the black lives matter to understand they're saying the same thing. Yeah. And a lot of people that are for the black lives matter movement aren't seeing the ignorant nuance being forgotten from the all lives matter people it's not even ignorance you know what i mean it's just it's just uh, it's just being blind a little bit you know it's just being unaware honestly i don't i wouldn't say it's ignorance you know what i mean was well, that almost a, what ignorance str- is though un- mm, i don't know i've seen some of it where it's willing ignorance so i'm really biased i'm sorry right <laughs> well no I, that's just what i'm saying like it's 
And this ultimately it creates division because it is such a hot topic. It is such a polarizing issue. It's like you're either all one way or you're all the other. And if someone falls in the gray area and they're not completely sold on either they're side, enemies yet, too. That yeah. If you're not on my side, you're in my way. Yeah. And so. that's definitely, I think that's a huge, that's a huge problem. And <laughs> the reason I say that is, um, while for me, I understand why the Black Lives Matter movement is very important. Um, once again, as it's been said so many times, uh, saying that Black Lives Matter is not saying that nobody else's lives matter. Right. But Absolutely. It's uh, trying to... It's inclusion. Right. You know it's like, take a mile in my shoes. Exactly. Um, like, for, for instance, I look at uh, I look at everybody with this sense of, well, I'm meeting somebody new or, uh, you know, this is an old friend of mine and we've made these different connections. You know, we are connected as people. Like, I like you because you bring positive energy into my environment. Mm -hmm. and that's why we're together. Yes. But... That one person that may look at me doesn't see me as a person. It's like they're looking at a pet or an animal. It's like, oh, you know, well, he's cute. You know, I could have him around, I guess. Or we just so happen to like the same things. Like, oh, he likes anime. I guess I like anime too. I mean, it's one of those things where the disconnect is not necessarily that all lives don't matter or whatnot. It's the fact that with black lives, they've been treated in such a feral, submissive mm. order. Like stigmatized, dehumanized even. Yeah, I was about to say, like, I mean, second-rate subhuman kind of thing. And that's and it's yeah. terrible. And, I mean, the second that you... The second that you dehumanize something, it's very easy to blow it off quick. Yeah, yeah it's just, just like... Disregard it. It's very easy, like, um, I've heard many people, it's like, I don't even watch the news because, I mean, we see crime every day, and mm -hmm. that's all they're putting on, so, or people that are big horror fanatics can watch different, you know, horror movies, and it's like, oh, okay, I see why they did that one jump scare. I mean, it didn't affect me, but, I mean, yeah, I see why they did that, it's oh, cool. Desensitized. Huh. It's very easy to, like you said, dismiss. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. It is. Um it's easy to uh, dismiss the accomplishments of Colin Kaepernick or easy to dismiss mm. the um, just the solid relationship of like Will Smith and Jada Pinkett. That's like, oh, I mean, it's black love, I guess. Power I mean, couple, man. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Power. I mean, it's it's very easy for you just. Well, I mean, I, I mean, he's he's funny for. I mean, a black guy. I like that Kevin Hart, but I mean, oh. whatever. He's supposed to be funny, right? I guess. It's 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 definitely one of those things that as you get into society and you see that maybe not everybody is looking at you as human. That's where it's wrong and it's weird because. Looking at the Constitution, it says that all men are created equal. But if you're not even considered a man, then how are you, how have you been created equal? Right. It's it's definitely uh, like I look at this old old document of George Washington and all the different founding fathers, and it's like I see this amazing dream that they had. You know, they were under. Uh, they were under a king's rule. Mm. They could not celebrate their religion. They had high taxes. They had all these different things. And it's like, you know what? Let's go to a new country. Granted, what they did to Native Americans wasn't the greatest. Horrible. Definitely bad. <laughs> um, but they set out on a mission to separate themselves to be free. Mm. And then come to... What is now, uh, what would now be later America back then was just the new world. It's like you're escaping from one really bad system, and you would think that, oh, you go to this other country, let's extend that same kind of courtesy, that same grace that we're trying to find here ourselves here in these 13 colonies. And Come it didn't happen. Mm. Went over to places like uh, Africa, which 
Some people still think it's the entire Africa was enslaved, and that's not the case. Nope. Definitely, if you look at the slave trade in different countries, it's definitely more of a coastal thing. Like, um, my family, uh, for what I know, none of them were slaves. They weren't brought to America. My, uh, my mom and dad are first gen Africans okay. here. Okay. Um, not saying that Africans didn't do some really terrible things to other Africans to avoid that, but um, almost aiding to the situation. Right. Mm. But came over to a whole nother country and picked other people up and brought them here and started off as endangered servitude. Like, okay, work for us for a little bit. Uh, you're not going to get paid or anything. But once you're done with your seven, 10 years, whatever, we'll send you back home. Mm. You'll have your riches to take care of your families. You'll be educated. You'll know about Christianity, the good work of the Lord, all this good stuff. You'll have all that. You can take it back home. Free of charge. Except and, for, you know, except for your 10 freedom. years of labor. Well, yeah. Other than that, free of charge. Yeah, free of charge. <laughs> and then that slowly built into, because I feel like a lot of people look at racism and or racism or slavery, and it's just like, bam, it happened. It's there. But everything is a slow process. Oh, it's, more, it's definitely a slow burn. Hundreds of years. So from indigenous servitude to slavery, then from slavery to segregation and of course those aren't just defining points but just looking at that it's just like from the minute that we even were brought here it was this is what you have to do you're not you're not a person you're just a tool for me to use so i don't have to do such and such or so i don't get hurt or to uh for a false sense of um this is my way of helping you out, right, right. for instance. Um, and that leading to all sorts of just negative things. This this particular country was supposed to be built on freedom, uh, the pursuit of happiness, liberty, all that good jazz that we talk about and country wave with, and God we trust on our dollar bills. Oh, but pure nationalism. But... <laughs> It's not something that was translated to everybody, which is why you have so many different amendments. Like women can, you know, like something for oh, women by to the way, vote. Women's opinions count now, right? <laughs> like all of a sudden, like oh, woman, you you are person. Why you are, are you? Are, why you are, are you person. upset? Wait, you have brain. You you know you don't just go and clean the house, but you know make reproduce. Food. You're worth more than just making children. I mean. <laughs> I mean, you just think about that. It's just yeah. it. It's same with women, and it goes with um, African Americans as well. It's just like we had to have these different amendments in there just for us to be like, oh, yeah, you can vote, by the way. You don't have to pay poll tax. Oh, by the way, you can own businesses. Uh, but it was should have been something that you would think, oh, this is understood. All men are created equal because it's men, not just like men the males but men in general talking about the entire populace right. so you, you would assume think, it's almost the biblical term of men. mankind yeah right so you would assume like oh that's already in there but of course you get the few people that are in power that misconstrue that pervert that alter that um uh, subvert expectations mm. if you've watched game of thrones you know that term mm. <laughs> but you have that going on for so many different years that, of course, it's going to translate into something like this, where in 2020, you have people that are like, you know, I'm 66 years old and I, you know, fought this shit back with Martin Luther King. Like, what is going on? Of course, you're going to have something like because the country was based on that. It's not something that will get fixed overnight, but it's something that uh, I believe I saw something with Colorado where they are making police officers uh they are making them more accountable with the body cams with yes they can be directly sued um if um if you have been written up for any kind of um excessive force you cannot work as a police officer anywhere in colorado which i think is a great step in the that right is, direction absolutely man and it's something that everyone should know everyone should celebrate but 
we still got to keep the ball rolling. Um, I saw something on Facebook talking about like the ages of the different people, like in the judicial branch, the people in the presidential office, people in the executive branch. And all these are people that, not saying that everybody in there is racist, but are probably set in stone with a lot of the ways of thinking when they were growing up. Mm-hmm. So it's like you have so many people that say, my vote doesn't count, it doesn't matter. Everything from the small things to the big things matter. Not just going out to the protest mm. and being like, black lives matter, because that can last until kingdom come. But if you don't go out and do the small things either, it's not going to help the situation. We can't get rid of the stigmatism of racism because a lot of these different rules and laws that are there right now, racism is pretty much abolished on paper. There you go. But and in practice, ideology and in practice, yeah. it's still there. So what I'm what I'm oh. hearing you say is that it's still very much alive and well, almost self perpetuating at that. Even if people don't proactively believe they're being racist, or even if someone isn't proactively being oppressed, you're almost set to feel that way, and therefore it's going to happen. It's yeah. almost like whenever it's a given. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like in a relationship whenever you're so afraid of getting hurt, you end up creating the situation that you get hurt. Aww. And that goes for both sides, though. Oh, that's... And um, that's what I'm hearing. And also what I'm hearing from you is go vote. Don't yeah, just for protest. Sure. For, sure. for sure vote. And vote on the small elections just as much as the big elections because the representatives, that's who won the election for Donald Trump, by the way. He lost the popular vote. FYI, your representatives are the ones that chose that they didn't actually mean that. (laughs) So (laughs) they're the ones that went and selected it. So if you want things to change, you need to go vote. And that also brings up a whole slew of things of how hard it is to vote for the black community, for other minorities, how hard it is to go to the polls when the ones in your district have been closed potentially on purpose. You know, now you have to travel to another district to vote, but you also have to be registered in that district. Of course. And if you're not, oh, you better hope you got your photo ID. You better hope you got your social security card. You better do it at least three weeks in advance or you you won't get your voter registration in time. Mm -hmm. You know, these are things that people don't know necessarily. Well, it's not taught in school. Exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. You need to learn it yourself. Yeah. And that's unfortunate because no one wants to help you. No. And um, everybody just wants to despise the numbers of voters for Donald Trump or for whomever they dislike and no research behind that at all. Yep. You know? It's just like what we talked about at the beginning of this discord um, whenever we brought up the uh, pie chart of the people in prison. Yeah. Those are just face value numbers. Just numbers. But like you just said, Donald Trump didn't win the popular vote. The representatives chose. Yeah, and, electoral college at work. I mean, it's the same elected. thing with Al Gore and Bush. I mean, I know you remember that. They called for a recount and Bush won. Huh. <clears throat> Shockingly. So, sorry. it's definitely like those, those small things. Like, once again, not that the protests are bad, because especially, um, especially seeing a lot of these peaceful protests and seeing everybody together, that brings a lot of happiness and joy to me. Because, like, you get so many different people that are like, this is wrong. Let's change it. Um, so that's definitely good. I'm not saying to stop that at any point in time because I want you guys to go out with your families. Oh. Go out with your friends. Definitely be as safe as possible because COVID-19 hasn't just magically gone away. But definitely it's it's great to see. It's great to be in this portion of history where people are like, this is wrong. Let's unify. Let's get the together. The largest, objectively, the largest civil rights movement ever. There has been protests in Globally. every state. Globally. There have been protests in almost every country, if not every country at this point. I'm fairly certain it's every country and now. And it, it is huge. And also, no one can say protests don't work. Because all of the things that are coming to pass now oh. are b- almost because of the protests exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, if the protests hadn't have happened... Now, I'm not necessarily saying the riots, too, but the protests themselves being sustained there's still protests going on we're not even talking about it anymore but this is like 20 days there are still people protesting seattle's got a freaking commune 
that have taken over. All right, that's different. Downtown. That is the same protesters, though. Oh, it's the same protesters, but that's what I'm saying, though. Like these people, they are dedicated to doing. I know, I know. They're different. At this point, it's gotten to the scale where it's so large. Who? What is the real point behind some of the protests? It's hard. It's hard to see. All but right. the Those Black protests. Lives the Black Lives Matter movement itself hmm. has obviously impacted. Um, the way your representatives, your governors, your police chiefs, everybody, the, the police chief for Atlanta stepped down yep. after what happened. Uh, I don't even know his name. I haven't taken the time to learn it. Oh, the Wendy's. The guy homicide? that got shot at Wendy's. Yes. No. Five times in the back. Yes. In the back. While he was running away. Sorry, man. Like that's murder. But I don't give she, a shit about she just, qualified she immunity. She just stepped down because, I mean, how, how can you keep... That's the best move she could have made. Or fire the two dudes. <laughs> the best move, fire, and then step yeah, down. Yeah, there you go, there you go, there you go. It's just, the protests work. They do. Voting also works. There's a lot of messed up stuff to deal with with the voting, though. There's gerrymandered districts. There's all kinds of stuff you can educate yourself on with how difficult people have tried to make it. Mm. There's this big move from mainly the left, currently, to get mail-in voting a thing. I think that would be huge. Man. If you could figure out if you could figure out a way to account for each mail in vote, which it doesn't take a rocket scientist. No. Have a code. Hell, have your social security number, if that's what it is. Almost everybody has their social security number, at least to my knowledge. Maybe I'm I'm missing some statistics on that as well. But there has got to be a way. Cause the census, we do it online. You know what they do? They mail you a code. Yep. They mail it to you. And then you get online. And you do all your little census stuff. And that's federal. That's like a big deal. Right. So if they can do that, how come we can't vote from home? Just to make, I mean, it's make, just it, to harder. make it harder, man. That's all it I is. I mean, Trump said it and himself. No Republican would win again. I'm sorry. I'm getting too too political on it. But <laughs> no, hey, no, I, that, I enjoy I it. <laughs> I like when you stare into my eyes and talk really raunchy, you know? It makes me feel good. <laughs> but, but, I mean, you bring a very valid point yeah. is that. Yeah, definitely go out and vote, but do learn about your district as well because the representatives that are going to be representing your ideals, what you want to see, go into those different people. So for you to be like, well, my vote doesn't matter. No, it does because the more people that are out there willing to share their opinion, the more people that are out there that are willing to be like, this is what I want to see happen – I mean, that, that gets a whole lot of different conversations started up. And it's more important, especially now, to have more conversations, to see what the other person is thinking about. Actual dialogues, yes. yes. Not not just let's yell at each other no, or no I'm going to go to war, this, that, or whatnot, which I have a whole post on Facebook, a couple of posts talking about the, uh, talking about the potential of having a race war in. Um, the United States, which you definitely... you think that would ever happen, really? My, my, I, I don't even want to say theory, but my hypothesis around it is that you have so many different people right now, and I've had people personally come to me and be like, look, I'm arming up. Like, you know, <laughs> it's about to go down. I mean, you're talking to two people that stay with weapons not for that but just for the general collapse of society at any point in time so absolutely we understand times. the the kind of be prepared mentality yeah, there but it's just prep right. mentality yeah that's it which i mean to me that is fine hmm. because i mean that's your second amendment right I exactly mean, that's what if you should have these weapons you're getting them through legal means by all means every have time. them every you know time. have them there with you but you have some people are like yeah you know, it's it's gonna get rough out there here soon. I'm like, yeah, don't make it rough. But <laughs> there's there's no like there's no reason to instigate. Like you have, <laughs> there have been several protests where people have instigated things that have brought a peaceful protest to a violent riot. Mm. Uh, you've had uh, people that have gone out, kind of like Jesse Smollett, a few years back, that are trying to get people riled actors, up. Yeah. Uh, media plays a huge part into that. Oh, absolutely. Oh, it's always um, negative. It's, it's one always. of those it's one of those things like even if the crime itself is not well, this white officer did this to that black guy. And it's like the division no matter what. Yes. It's one of those that they can use a paintbrush and make any story over exaggerated or under exaggerated. 
and not that every news station does this, but Majority. as far as as far as the news goes, I mean, like I said, you've got to take it with a grain or a pillar of salt, depending Mostly on what pillars. The and you're, I mean, I mean, and we're not talking about small networks. No, you know I mean, no, talking, we're about, talking the, about the four, we're, like the, the major big, the ones: MSNBC, CNN, CNN Fox, Fox, which is nonsense. I mean, sorry, yeah. people. I mean, you have so many different things that kind of work against you from the media to the system itself. It's just there's a lot of things that you're working against. In order for us to finally get that going in a direction that we can say, this is how I want to leave the earth. When all is said and done, this is how I want to leave it. Mm. It's being able to have that dialogue. Go out and talk to people. Kind of like what you guys did with um, Facebook. Like, hey... I want to have a conversation about this. Right. Who's going to come out and, you know, lay it all out? Be anonymous. Don't be anonymous. Whatever. Let's just talk and see what your thoughts are. Because the more that we can, because the, the Democratic Republic system on paper, for me, it's, looks fantastic. Oh, it's not nece- it's not necessarily like the 100% end all be all, right. but it's definitely a fantastic system because it's not flawless. you have the people that are like, hey, I really like what you got going on. I want you to go and represent that for me. Mm. Uh, And you have masses of people that are able to do that. Like, hey, I want you to go and represent my town. Uh, Hey, I want you to go represent my city. Hey, I want you to go represent my nation. So you have all (laughs) this, you have all these different things coming into play. So, as far as that, that's great to have that system, to not be under a monarchy where it's like, well, you know, we're either getting the spoiled brat or, you know, we're getting the, you know, quiet, you know, quiet child that may or may not be afraid of crowds and can't really lead a people. So, I mean, that's great. The one that took tennis well lessons three times a well week. Put, or the one that killed all the small animals that got in the back <laughs> courtyard. <laughs> Uh, either way, they're my majesty. We don't have to deal with that here. No. But it's all about what we're putting into our system. So that way things like ours things like our school system can get fixed. Well, things like oh the national system can get fixed. There are so hey, many levels of mess. I mean, uh, how big of an eyesore is that new jail that they're building? Dude, the I Civic hate that Center? thing. You've seen it? I hate that thing. I haven't, yeah. You haven't seen that? It's I'll, right across the street have, from the Civic Center. Have you center. been through downtown? I guess you, if you came from out north, you had to come through that area, passing the Civic Center. The old, the old jail, or the current jail, I should say, is if you're coming from North Island or the North Bypass, when it merges out south, there's the Civic Center that'll be mm. on your left. Yep. And uh, right across the street, exactly, is the jail. And oh. then next to Under that is a multi-million dollar under construction Jail that's going to be like well, I want to say twice the size, maybe more. Um, it's bullshit, man. They're yeah. investing in penalizing people. They're not investing in stopping it from happening or rehabilitating people. Right. Damn. And or just trying to put money back into the community to provide better opportunity for people yeah. so they don't, we, we, you know, devolve or result to having to do criminal acts. Yeah, you know we don't try to help anybody. We're going to damn sure be there to hit you with oh, a stick when them. you do something oh, yeah. bad. Fuck the carrot. Here's a stick. I'm not going to help right. you do anything good, though. Yeah. All that's, about coulda, not shoulda. Yeah, definitely <laughs> that's a disturbing thought that I hadn't even thought about because, I mean, one kind of going back into the school system, like a lot of great teachers mm. that are in there but a lot of great teachers that are being held under such minute red tape. Hands are tied, man. Like, you, they can't teach. Like, a lot of these teachers have to teach, like, for instance, history. They have to teach this specific way wow. for this test. And the way that oh even gosh, the school... Oh, preaching to me right We're now. We're getting Look. real deep now, guys. Yeah, and I'm feeling this on, like, a spiritual level. <laughs> We're about to... Hour and 24 minute in. Hell yeah. Nice. I feel like we've been talking for 30 minutes. Nice. This has been a good conversation, but continue, yeah, continue. Yeah. But School just, systems suck, I know. Oh, yeah, but just even getting into, because I have a couple, like, one of my best friends, uh, their teacher is, uh, their mom is a teacher, excuse me, mm-hmm. and I think she's an incredible lady. 
I feel like she could, you know, talk your pants off about just lots of different historical events. Right. But with hands being tied, how do you get to enjoy that? Like, how do you get, uh, like, teachers have to find so many crafty, unique ways to get around certain things. And then on top of being <laughs> underpaid, you can potentially turn a lot of really good teachers to sour and bitter and wondering why they even got into this profession in the first place. Um, just trying to get the kids through. And then at that point, that, I mean, when There's, you have that kind of system... It's not it's, educational. It's defeating. It's self-defeating. I mean, look at prisons. For, like, if you look at prisons and you see how some of them are run, you wake up in the morning, hmm. you get your breakfast, you get your meal, all right. You go and do whatever activity back in your your cell. Then you may have thirty to uh, thirty minute to an hour break time out in the park or rec, whatever yard. they have there. <laughs> the yard. Yeah. <laughs> then you you have your duties, mm -hmm. and then it's back in the cell. Well, translate that to school. You wake up early in the morning. Uh -huh. You may or may not have breakfast, uh, depending on who you are. Uh, you go, you might have that one teacher that just absolutely doesn't care. It's like, hey, I'm going to read from the book. This is what we're doing. You have your 30-minute break. You have your homework. Mirrored. And then you go home to do that homework, and then you go to sleep. So it's just like, to see that kind of parallel for prisons and schools it's just I mean, you don't have to agree with me. You can dev you feel free to disagree. Absolutely agree with you, man. But I definitely agree that they are very similar in look. But also, if you think about it, at the original core, they're kind of supposed to be similar in what they do. Like when you go to prison, it is in a way punishment. You're being removed from society, right? right. Mm, of course. But also, Shook it's reformation. Rights. That's the ideal. You're supposed to be. Taught, retaught how to be a better human because you got here by doing something bad. In in the perfect world scenario, you went to prison because you did something worthy of going to prison. Yes. Of course. So if you're in prison, the idea is we're going to help you not be a bad person, get you out of whatever state you are, teach you a craft, teach you something, teach you uh, some. Um, I almost said psychology. Teach you some philosophy. You got you got religion. Or a trade. Exactly. Yeah. And you're learning all these things. And by the time you get out, yeah. you're not supposed to be just some big jacked guy that got in with a gang and because that's how you have to live because the other gangs are going to isolate you and kill you. Or rape you. If you don't. Like, exactly. So, I mean, it's, it's self-defeating. Like, like, it's a good idea. But as my dad always told me, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. It wasn't maintained properly. Neither was the school system. No. They're mirror images of each other in how you are regimented, scheduled, and how you function. And since they're both poorly managed, they almost do bleed into each other. And I think, I mean, the prison system now, mainly, it just it just breeds, uh, what's the word, recidivism? Is that what it is? Recidivist? I think that's, that's fair. <clears throat> Constantly that's a... going back, you know? Because certain people, man, it's all they know. You know what I mean? They feel a part of something in this in these huge concrete walls. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this and, is... <clears throat> I'm sorry. No, you continue. You were about to finish. My dad, okay? This is extremely personal. Um, went to prison when he lived in California, okay? For a year, two years maybe. So when he got into prison, he's a white man, okay? Mm -hmm. Went to a pretty much cartel-ran prison. MS-13 ran prison. So he has... Lightning bolts tattooed on his arm for his own safety. Now, today, he'll tell you, he's getting it covered up with the Raiders logo. <laughs> and I was like, that's pimp, because they really don't even look like lightning bolts anymore. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. when I was 8, 10, somewhere around there, asking, like, what, did, what does this mean? You know, he's like, well, this is a part of a, uh, you know, a group of people that have ideals that are vastly <laughs> obtuse to other people's ideas you know what right. i mean and uh it it kind of opened my eyes you know what i mean because i have a uncle and that's in prison still and you know the stories that he tells me because he is a loner because he is deemed crazy by 
all of the prisoners because he grows hair up to here and he's six seven and he has, and him. his head on his hair is past his ass and, and man it's some wild shit <laughs> he's done some crazy things that he told me hey, all right and uh yeah but <laughs> it's just wild man if you you can't be alone there well that's it kind of goes into what I was going to talk about. Talk about and, it, then. Uh, there's a if you if you have Netflix, you can watch this. It's called Shot Collar. Now I don't know how much of it's been Hollywooded up or whatever, right? But it shows you a man, a very privileged white man, living in a very expensive house with a very nice job, with a you know the wife and two point five kids, all that stuff. He's you know the mm-hmm. ideal, the American dream, who goes out with his friends one night, partakes of too much of the drink. Mm-hmm. Crashes into another car, gets his friend in the back seat killed. Oh shit! That's vehicular manslaughter. Yes, it is. And along with a slew of other things tagged onto it because he was driving under the influence. Mm-hmm. So he ends up having to go to prison. It's not a very long stint, but he's in there for I don't know. I want to say six years. Six okay. is what they were going to put him in there for. Which is, I mean, six years is a long time. I'm only 25. That's 31. Woo. You'd get out. Yeah. Mm. So he goes to prison, and the last piece of advice his lawyer gives him is you have to be the toughest guy in there. Well, yeah. Now, that's the general mentality I get from a lot of people in prison. It's like you, if you go to prison, you have to do something rough yeah. to be safe. Well, in doing that, the Aryan Nation mm. saw him. This is a movie. He saw them as the only safe haven. They convinced him. That they're the safe haven mm. against the the uh, MS thirteen, the Crips. That's just that's that's who you need to be with if right, you don't want to be you know yeah, it's, picking it's, up it's soap. It's extremely your whole tribal, time. extremely exactly. tribal. And in doing that, mm. in agreeing to join them, it was done. Yeah, his you, don't, you, you don't get to leave. Nope, you're now part. So and and he is institutionalized at that point. He ends up having to do something for them in prison. Which lands him an attack on to his sentence of five more years because he killed someone in a fight in prison. In doing so, he, he's, just, he's sticking close. It's like a toxic relationship. You do something that makes you end up getting closer to the toxic person. It's almost like, what is the, uh, what's the syndrome called whenever? Stockholm, Stockholm syndrome. Stockholm syndrome. Like, they're your savior. Yeah. And that's what happened. And I believe that's, I feel like that's true. I don't have statistics for that, but based off of the stories like you were telling me, even just your father trying yeah. to stick in with people that would help. Protect him. Yeah. You don't yeah. want to be alone in a situation of tribal mentality. and It's sad, man. It's extremely sad. And it but, also that also ple- that also kind of bleeds into the systemic racism that we're talking about here, though, <laughs> because it's just it's all self-perpetuating yeah, it is. in the long run. And one more thing. That I want, if anyone is still listening at this point, which I pray you are, (laughs) please look up Jane Elliott's Brown Eye, Blue Eye. Have either of you seen that? Nope. I have not. Okay. When this is all over, I'll show you a snippet of it. Okay. But effectively, Jane Elliott, she's a white woman, a teacher. Hmm. Uh, She was teaching children at the time of the civil rights movement with Martin Luther King. Okay. She was in a... Basically, one hundred percent white school district. Okay. Um, and these white kids could not understand what was going on. They didn't understand what was going on, and she was going to try to figure out a method for them to understand what is racism. None of you are black. None of you are going to get it. I'm sure your parents aren't teaching you. I'm going to show you what it is. I can't separate you based off of skin, but your eye color, I can separate you by. Oh shit. Wow. So brown eyed, blue eyed. So she does the brown eyed as the more privileged, preferred class of people. Okay. If you have brown eyes, you're in her favor. If you have blue or lighter colored eyes, you're out. So she'll she'll split a group by their eye color. Uh, specifically in the modern the modern version of this experiment that she runs, the blue eyed people get little scarves. And sent off to a separate room with little to no chairs to sit in. So they either have to sit on the floor or stand up until she gets finished introducing the blue eyed people with what's going on. I mean, the brown eyed people with what's going on. Okay. The brown eyed people are immediately treated better. They're treated mm. like people. Yeah. So, we'll get, oh, so, oh, you have brown eyes. Perfect. Please go sit over there in the, uh, 
in the chairs. Yes, make yourself comfortable. And then she sees the blue-eyed people, and she's like, oh, one of you. Okay. Oh, shit. And then when they say something, like, they'll be thinking it's funny because they don't understand this is an experiment yet. So they'll think it's funny, and they'll say something quippy. said, don't be smart with me. Oh. I haven't had a good day, and you're not going to have a good day either. Damn. So get on, get on in there. Let's get this over with as fast as we can. So immediately out of the gate, the system, because she's the system, right? Mm -hmm. She is going to perpetuate what's already happened. So she's perpetuating what society would most likely perpetuate. Mm. So now these these blue eyed people are confused. Right out of the gate, you know, they they're they don't know what they're being judged for. Much like actual racism, like right out of the gate, unless someone tells you, "Hey, they're being mean to you because your skin's brown." Like, if no one tells you these things, you don't know what's... Why am I different? What have I done to be treated differently? And then the brown-eyed people, they have no clue. They're not paying attention to the fact that it the blue-eyed people... At all. I mean, the blue-eyed people are getting messed with. Mm -hmm. So they just go sit down. So by the time she splits the groups, the blue-eyed people are all in a room that's not comfortable, mm. waiting with a guard. There's a guard. That's important. And they cannot leave. They can't go to the bathroom. They can't do anything. They have to be in this room. The brown-eyed people are all sitting in a nice, well-lit comfortable, relatively comfortable place, of which she tells them, the blue-eyed people, they're all bad. She, t she tells all the brown-eyed people, they're racist. These are all people that I found that they, they, think, they think you guys are, they don't, they don't believe in racism. Okay? So we're going to help them. We're going to help them to understand what racism is. So, and of course, with brown eyes, most people um, with darker skin are more likely to have darker eyes. On average, there are black people with blue eyes, but yes. on average. Mm -hmm. So you have a higher possibility that minorities are going to be in this group. And, of course, there are white people with brown eyes, too. So the minorities instantly, oh, yeah, I, I understand what we're doing. Uh, okay, we're going to help them understand how I've been treated mm -hmm. my whole life. And then the white people are like, why are we? Why are we going to be mean to them? Like, because she's actively telling them, "We well, need to be ruthless. They need to understand what's happening. They need to understand." And as she did again, she's playing the role of the system, right? And when I say the system, I don't mean like an organization, but as we stated this whole night, it is the past. It is the few racists that get popular. It mm. is History. the precedents. It is the fact that white people <clears throat> might avoid a black person on the street because statistically, black people are more likely to be incarcerated, therefore more violent. I'm doing finger quotes here, by the way. You can't see that. But it is all of these things that play into the systemic racism. So she is just teaching the brown-eyed people that they're helping them by showing them something and that they should be treated differently. So... What happens is eventually after this introduction, which on average takes like an hour. Right. So keep in mind, the blue-eyed people have been in an uncomfortable place for one whole hour, unable to take bathroom breaks, unable to know what's going on. They do not know. She lets them converge. So they all come in there together. There is not enough seats. There's not enough seats for everybody. There's typically one or two people that have to sit on the floor. And you cannot sit where the brown-eyed people sit. You are not allowed. You have to sit in the middle. Where you're supposed to be. So, like, the blue-eyed people sit in the middle. The brown-eyed people are looking at them. Uh. And she's, like, the ringleader. And, by the way, she weeds out anybody that's not comfortable with it in the beginning. So, if you're not going to participate in the oh, game okay. that she has set you. up, you, you leave. You leave. Right. You're vetted. Mm -hmm. Right. So, that way she gets optimal results. So, from there, she's lied to the brown-eyed people. She's told them that these people are racist. She's told them that they're different, that they're already going to hate them. Uh. Told them that. So, now they're coming in with the belief that... <laughs> This person's going to do something bad to me. Oof. I need to do something to show them that I'm not going to be messed with. I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do this to help them in the long run. And it's very insightful to watch. And it's it's rough. People cry. People cry. Because it is, it is so brutal by the time at the end of the day. And it's definitely, I think, a perfect showing of how systemic racism works. If you've never seen her do it, look her up. She's got hundreds of recordings of her you described it i mean fucking yeah spot on. hundreds hundreds of recordings of her doing it you can watch it it is like brutally fantastic 
to see it happen just because you see like the eyes open of the people that went through the experiment They're after like, it's oh, all over. Sh- so that's yeah. is that what it's really like? Is that what it's like to come in from down the hill instead of midway or at the top of it? So that is definitely a very good viewpoint because kind of like you said we've been talking about the whole night that um for a lot of people that maybe don't believe systemic racism is a thing, it might just be something that you've been, uh, you've had your eyes averted to. Like, it, mm. m- maybe you're in a situation like mine where you've had great people. Right. Maybe that's just something that throughout, I mean, throughout your life, you've just, you've either been unaware or you've been told, like, look, just don't be around this person. And you never really get a straight answer as to why. Um, but once you finally get in there and it's like, I'm going to show you, this is how it's like, watch this. And you put that kind of experiment together and something as simple as like eye color. Um, it's just, that's very deeply fascinating because eye color is like, well, I have brown eyes. I mean, anybody from any other race could have brown eyes, but because I have brown eyes, guess what? I'm better than you. And it's like, but why do brown eyes make you better? You're just preferred, man. You know? Or it's, for instance, like you said, blue eyes. Well, I have blue eyes. What, like, why is this person treating me bad? Well, you have blue eyes. Well, why does that matter? Right. So it's it's definitely one of those things. Like, it's very that's very interesting. That's very cool. Um, Damn. I I don't know if we are closing out or. I'm I'm, uh, I'm getting a little close to it. I'm not completely ready yet. We are approaching like a pretty good amount of time but that's fine this is a very special topic it is and a very special you're the first guest too man so yeah we'll have a yeah it's just how it is (laughs) i I did i did have something else pulled up here from none other than ben and jerry's ice cream oh shit they i noticed that font (laughs) (laughs) they are so oh man they are so anti-racist it is awesome because they have compiled so many statistics here and i know it's probably like going to be frowned upon if I use uh, Ben and Jerry statistics, but y'all can uh, screw off. It's his favorite ice cream, assholes. It's very true. <laughs> um, but anyways, if you you can go to their website if you want to be educated more. This is the article is titled Seven Ways We Know Systemic Racism Is Real," uh, and it's on Ben and Jerry's website. You can locate it very very quickly because they want you to see it. Uh, and, of course, they have some statistics about the presidencies and which one did better. But the first thing they point to is wealth. Who controls all of the wealth? So 77% of the population controls 90% of the wealth, and those are classified as white people. Whereas in African Americans, they make up 13% of the population but only have 2.6% of the wealth. Wow. According to one study, white families hold 90% of national wealth, Latinos families, Latino families hold 2.3%, and black families hold 2.6%. Not only that, <clears throat> the Great Recession hit minority families particularly hard, and the wealth gap has increased. Think about this. That was the 2006-2007 era, Right, right. For every $100 white families earn in income, black families earn just $57.30. Let that sit for a second. And the last sentence is, that's almost unbelievable, and it's a huge racial justice issue, which it is. That's fucking bonkers, man. I mean, just looking at those particular statistics, it's just like, to every $100, you're only getting a little over half of that. That's like for every dollar, you get 50 cents. Yeah, that was literally, I mean, 58 cents. And also, just so everyone knows, the study that that came from, if you want to cross-check me, it's from the American Prospect. That's at uh, prospect.org. Top 10% of white families own almost everything. That is that is definitely... Mind-boggling. Yes. God. Also, African Americans are two times as likely to be unemployed. Now, like I said earlier, you can do, like, I could see where someone uh, that is doesn't believe in systemic racism could say that well that's just because they don't try right you can you can flip your bias on it if you want to but at the end of the day the number is the number so research it find the nuance find the means 
Not just the end. Show me the documents. <laughs> um, it's next to impossible to build wealth without steady and rewarding employment. But the black unemployment rate has been consistently twice that of whites over the past 60 years. No matter what has been going on with the economy, whether it's been up or down. And you think higher education would help, but according to the data, black people with college degrees are still twice as likely to be unemployed as other graduates. And that may be because, as another study, which I'll cite here in a second, found that job applicants with white-sounding names get called back about 50% more mm -hmm. than applicants with black-sounding names. Are you fucking kidding me, man? I'm going to take I a look at that. Um, oh, oh, yes, it even says it right there, identical yeah, this, resumes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my. F I can believe that because I've been on both ends of that spectrum right. where... I've placed in a couple job applications, and I've had the experience. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that I'm a pretty decent worker mm -hmm. and not gotten a call back. And I've also seen the hiring side where it's like, uh, yeah, her name. It's just, it's, it's Jay Quallen? Um, nah, I, I, nah, just go ahead and put it in the trash. We're not going to call What about Sarah? Out. Oh, Sarah? I went to Union. Oh, wow. It, Great girl. Uh, let's go ahead, call her in. We'll get her a call back. Okay, but what about uh, Jamesia? You know, she went to Union, too. Higher GPA. Uh, I mean, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to we'll, we'll see. We'll, oh, but she has if five Sarah years of employment work, experience. If Sarah doesn't work, we'll, we'll try Jamesia. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the file. And oh, we'll... how is Tasha spelled? Is it T-A-S-H-A -S or T-O-S-H-I-A? Goodness gracious! No bullshit, man. That, mm. That's an actual I, thing. I knew you had a you have a sister named Tasha. Don't I, have you? A, I have a sister named Natasha, okay. and you know how many times she's gotten calls from people. Is is this? I'm gonna do an impression. Is this Tasha? <laughs> yes, this is Tasha. That lives on seventy seven something something Street. No, you have the wrong number. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, and by the way, that's, that uh, statistic of unemployment is from the National Bureau of Economic Research. So Sounds fancy to me. That uh, is a .org website, nber.org, so you can find that out. Seems like a pretty reputable source to me. Man, Ben and Jerry's is on it, man. And then they go on to education. Let's discuss education a little more in depth. If you thought that preschool at least was racism-free, well, consider that while black children constitute 18% of preschoolers nationwide, they make up nearly 50% of suspensions. That is in preschool. When all age groups are examined, black students are three times more likely to be suspended than white students, even when their infractions are similar. Overall, black students represent 16% of student enrollment and 27% of students referred to law enforcement. And once black children are in the criminal justice system, they are 18 times more likely than white children to be sentenced as adults. And, of course, there are statistics being cited for every one of those numbers. I'll click on one just to prove to you that it is coming from a good one. Oh, what's the website? Let's see here. Oh, this is a the essence of innocence, consequences of dehumanizing black children. This looks to be a report. Um, the APA.org. So let me go see what that is. Oh, more organizations, huh? But uh, I, th I feel like one thing before we get on to the next thing on this website, just to make clear. It's not saying that due process should not be followed in any or every situation, regardless of race. Right. It's not saying that, well, because he's black, you know, you have to treat him a certain way. Not at all. Not saying that you should be pampering or doing whatever. Right. Uh, same thing with the white community. Not saying that every white person that is in the just uh, that is dealing with um uh, court or anything like that. Oh, yeah. give them the death penalty. Every one of them. Doesn't matter what they did. That's all you got to do. The point is, treat them the same. If, for Absolutely. instance, you are going to, like, take the preschool, you're going to suspend, you know, John uh, because he was, you know, not sharing his toys at school. Well, then, if you're going to do that with John, make sure you do that with Peter. If you're going to do that to Cornelius, well, make sure you do that 
with Samantha. It's a matter of just if you're going to do your job properly and justly, make Im sure that you're doing it for both. Don't hold uh -huh. some Impartial sort of... Impartial judgment. Don't do a double standard like this George Floyd incident. I Never once have I said that, oh, we don't need to follow this. Go ahead and do whatever you got to do. Because at the end of the day, I mean... You still have to follow that red tape. Do I believe that he should be in prison? Do I believe that he needs a pretty rough sentence? Of course. Because what he did was not right. Regardless if he was racist or not. But it's a matter of look at the evidence, do your work, do the job, and make sure you're doing so fairly. Because in mm -hmm. showing that fairness and showing that justness for this one crime and doing it to other crimes as well, and having that branch off into education, everything we've been talking about tonight, mm -hmm. you can change the hearts and minds of millions of people. Mm -hmm. Because then at that point, then it's like, okay, so I do have equal opportunity. I can go out and make something of myself, whether it's YouTube, whether it's being a CEO, mm -hmm. l becoming the president. I don't have to worry about, well, you know, this person is going to see me one way or another, or I don't have to worry about that with the majority of people anymore because people are looking at my ideas. They're looking at my character. They're looking at my Personality. being. Yeah. Absolutely. Don't meet injustice with more injustice. That's what I, that's the big draw I got from the first part of that is if you, if you meet wrong with more wrong, they don't cancel each other out. No. You're just further perpetuating an issue. Um, and also, the organization that did those stats, that was the American Psychological Association. So, pretty pretty legitimate source there, I believe. Yeah, they collect information on bias, discrimination, and equity resources. Bada bing. The next point that Ben and Jerry's wants to bring up here is criminal justice. Given the statistics... On education, perhaps it should not come as a surprise that even though, as we said, black people made up 13% of the population, they represent about 40% of the prison population. Why is that? Perhaps because if a black person and a white person each commit a crime, the black person has a better chance of being arrested. It's also true that once arrested, black people are often convicted or are convicted more often than white people, and for many years, laws assigned much harsher sentences for using or possessing crack, for example, compared to cocaine. For sure. Finally, when black people are Reagan. convicted, they're about 20% more likely to be sentenced to jail time and typically see sentences 20% longer than those for white people who are convicted of similar crimes. And as we know, a felony conviction means in many states you lose your right to vote. Right now in America, more than 7.4% of the adult African-American population is disenfranchised compared to 1.8% of non-African-American population. And just really think about that, of how detrimental that can be just to society because take my name for instance my name is ricardo um just hearing it uh statistically speaking very vague statistics anyway ricardo is a hispanic name but i go to a convenience store and i rob the place i can get a higher sentence but you throw my name onto a caucasian gentleman and he does the same thing Maybe it's just a warning, depending on what it is. Right. Maybe it's a shorter sentence. Community service or something. You know. Right. It's, Lighter. Yeah. It's one thing that I've said um, with George Floyd. The injustice wasn't done to the name. It's important to remember it for this particular se uh, season of life right now. But the injustice wasn't done to the name. It was done to the character. It was Man. done... To the personality right and done to a community that's that's the big issue hmm. it was done to a community of african americans here in the united states because george floyd could have easily have been ricardo psungo could have easily been john wayne could have easily been colton hunt Absolutely. exactly 
And all, another little aside to just furthermore reinforce what Ben and Jerry's have been talking about. Some of those statistics came from the United States Sentencing Commission. That is a government organization. Oh, man. I'm so close to walking out. <laughs> they even go on with housing. Said when the government sought to make mortgages more affordable back in the 1930s, thereby jump-starting the epoch of suburban living, the homeowners loan corporation, and thereafter private banks ranked neighborhoods all around the country, giving them high marks to white neighborhoods and marking those with minorities in red as risky investments. Redlining, which essentially barred black people and other minorities from sharing in the American dream and building wealth like their white counterparts was officially outlawed in the 60s, but the practice never really went away. In fact, during the Great Recession, which keep in mind, everyone, that's not the Great Depression, that is the 2000s, yep. banks routinely and purposefully guided black home buyers toward subprime loans. Which, if you don't know what those are, those are nasty high interest rate high loans. interest rate loans. Uh, a recent study demonstrated that people of color are told about and shown fewer homes and apartments than white people, and black ownership is now at the all-time low. 42 percent. Excuse me. Go ahead. 42 percent compared to the 72 percent for white people. It's fucking ridiculous, man. Go to surveillance. I need to see this. Okay. I read, I read most of it. So surveillance. <clears throat> do you want to read this one? Yeah. Uh, no. I mean, Ricardo, do you want to read it? Sure, why not? Had a had a whole story about it at the beginning of this. So. so under surveillance, it says, if you're white, you don't usually need to worry about being monitored by the police. But the day-to-day -day reality for African Americans is quite different. More than half of all young black Americans know someone, including themselves, who have been harassed by the police. Statistics also show that black drivers are 30% more likely than whites to be pulled over by the police. So African Americans can expect to be monitored wherever they go. But did you know that they can't even expect to safely cross the street? Blacks are twice, are twice as likely to die in pedestrian accidents than whites, perhaps because according to one study... Motorists are less likely to stop for blacks in the crosswalk. And of course, it's well known that Muslims are under increasing and often illegal surveillance. What's that one study? I need to see that. So that was that was one from the Washington Post by Frederick Frederick Kunkel, I believe. Um, Frederick see. Cuckold, and he also he also quotes his own studies in here. So we have to go down the study rabbit hole. But if you're interested in finding the validity of these studies, uh, please humor me and visit the website. They're all extremely valid. Uh, there are plenty of hot links here, where you can one. you can see where these are. Um, oh, man. I mean, he they go on, they go on to. I think this might be the last point, actually. So we'll, well, we'll go healthcare. Healthcare. African Americans in particular face discrimination in the world of healthcare too. A 2012 study. That's not old. That's 8 years ago. 8 years ago found that majority of doctors have quote unconscious unconscious racial biases end quote when it comes to their black patients. Black Americans are far more likely than whites to lack access to emergency medical care, the hospitals they go to tend to be less well-funded and staffed by practitioners with less experience. But even black doctors face discrimination. They are less likely than their similar, similarly credentialed white peers to receive government grants for research projects. And it seems that facing a lifetime of racism leaves African Americans vulnerable to developing stress-related health issues that can lead to chronic issues later in life as what well. What is uh, unconscious racial biases mean? Um, as far as like a loose interpretation, because this is definitely not something that you find on Webster, but un I would say that it's very much an environmental Thing, right. Kind of okay. where you've grown up. Right. Okay. okay. But, Location. Uh, yes, Ish. in a sense, because it's like as you're growing up, if you're being 
you know, presented with one idea, mm. uh, like take Santa Claus is real, and you grow up in that environment where everybody's believing that, and then you get into another one where it's like, no, he's not. That's you person. an idiot. <laughs> it's like that Santa Claus isn't real. It's like you've already been built into that particular bias. system. I get it. I get it. So, I so it's like almost unknowingly. Yeah, almost. Uh, kind of like what I talked about at the very beginning with right. white and black. How over here we don't see It's a that. descriptor. You're right. right. That's right. Damn. I'm pissed. And also the uh, the healthcare uh, hot link is broken. So if you try to go to Ben and Jerry's and click on that one for reference, you're not going to find it. But it, it, it did come from a, an organization called Think Progress. So I'm trying to go through there and find it myself. But they have quite a few videos and stories and their archive, so I'm just gonna uh, accept that one for where it is. I think currently. I said it last time on the podcast, or on the last podcast. Excuse uh, on the last podcast. Excuse me. Ooh, we at two hours, <laughs> son. Yeah, this is the first one. This is the first two hour one we ever had, isn't it? This is. Fuck yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah, man! Badass. Hey, that's what we're here to do. Talk. Um. Yeah, everybody needs to listen to Goody Mob's album Soul Food. Yeah, about in its entirety as well. It's my favorite album of all time to come out of the nineties. I'll have to listen to and that. And I love Tool. I've never, so I've never watch heard out. that. Oh man. Okay. I'm sorry. Sorry. That was just an aside. No, you're good. Um, now that we we've reached the two hour mark, we we've, we've covered at least all of what a reputable corporation, I will say reputable, a prominent corporation <laughs> and their reputable sources that they have tagged. And all of the list that they have done with proving systemic racism to be true, we've covered all those points. Ricardo's commented on them with not only personal experience, but also even more statistical and very evidence. If you need more than that to see that it's a thing, like I understand it is at the end of the day data. Yeah, and at but the end of the day, you can put biases on it. No, fuck that. If they need more evidence, they have their blinders on. Up, excuse me. These Their people are living up. like they have tunnel vision. You know what I'm saying? And you need to be wide shot, panoramic. Is that right? Yeah, panoramic. Yeah, that's fair. Ricardo, also, fuck those people. I agreed. <laughs> Ricardo, do you have any closing remarks for us, man? This, before before <laughs> I let you close out, it has been a pleasure. Absolutely, man. I want to have you back on here for, for sure. Hefty topics, fun topics. This has been great. You, an excellent Sweet. first guest for the second season. And an excellent topic, it was and a thank pleasure, you so much man, for sure. And I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you take us out. Wait, what flavor jewel you smoke? Uh, I'm not a jeweler. Okay, uh, what do you what do you vape? Uh, right now, my favorite is Strawberry Extreme. F of Vapor and Myelin does me real right because I I like a good menthol flavor, but I like nice. strawberries. So. All right, so you're a vape nation kind of guy. Yeah, I like that, it. That is me. Hell yeah! All right, closing statement, sir. Uh, so. Just kind of as an overarching thing. And one small thing that I wanted to bring in there, too, just to kind of tack it off. Um, I know that um, a lot of people have been giving hate to the person that recorded or the people that recorded the George Floyd incident. And I feel that that's very wrong. So I wanted to address that here shortly before we close. Um, Take a moment to be in their shoes. I know we've been pretty much drilling that into you guys' head here. But take a minute to step in their shoes. This is a younger teenager hmm. against a 35-year-old. Let, let's not even take the fact that he's a police officer. This is somebody that's well-aged, that is police-trained. Now throw the uniform on, and you're recording this uh, this incident, and you're seeing the person that is supposed to be serving, protecting the community, somebody that... If you go against them, you can serve time. You can be in these same statistics where you have lost your vote to right. Um, uh, One of uh, (laughs) you lost your vote to right. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Lost your vote to right. We're gonna stick with that one. (laughs) That's all good, man. We've been uh, talking for two hours. um, But you've lost your right to vote. You've um, you've pretty much become a slave to the system as far as prison goes, all for attacking somebody that's supposed to be protecting you and your community. Like, think of your favorite superhero. 
And all of a sudden you see them strangling an innocent man. Or you see them strangling a civilian. Take Superman. Superman has godlike power. And all of a sudden you just, he's there holding you. Holding this one person, you're recording it. What do you do against that? Yeah, All ultimately. that training, the fact that they were supposed to be the shield, but now they're not. Think about all the different conflicting feelings. Like, going on in that one teenager's mind, I've heard, um, don't quote me on it, but I've heard that this person is seeing two different counselors. One to deal with the fact that she saw police brutality. Another for the people sending her death threats mm -hmm. when that was the safest thing that she could have done. Mm -hmm. Because in that instance, if she had intervened, what was she going to do? She was going to go there and possibly die too. Mm -hmm. And if she didn't record it in this era where we've had media, George Floyd could have potentially been another case that was just swept under the rug. And nobody really heard about. So she did the best thing that she could have done in that situation. And I want y'all to realize that that's what she did for her safety and just for things to get kicked off the way they did uh, to really start having these kinds of conversations. And just at the end of the day, uh, everybody, just be good people. Go out there, learn from each other, be willing to learn, be open minded. Even if it's your first time having to talk about the situation with friends, family members, and the like, be willing to have those conversations and be ready to have your world rocked. Because maybe some of these points and some of these things that you haven't seen will come into your life and really change your perspective and can really open you up to just a lot of love, understanding and a sense of peace where right now we just don't have a lot for mm. several different reasons so go out there be good people let's learn from each other let's talk Dude, god bless you ricardo that was oh, i man. couldn't have formed better words i don't even want to taint it with much more speaking after that so thank you for coming on the show with us thank you very much thank man. you guys for, for listening real. and i uh, hope you have a good day from big word little thought and ricardo peace